This is the introduction. Oh. We don't even have to introduce ourselves anymore. We're already there's, done. There's gonna be something no, we should there. always introduce ourselves. Well, who are you? I'm fucking Karina. We have no new listeners because we have no old listeners. No. You know what? <laughs> that is a negative way to view the world. Fuck you and fuck your ideas. Today, Judge Judy will be played by Karina Young. <laughs> I am Jeremy Johnson. I'm Antigone. Me? Not once, not once. <laughs> Hang on, I wasn't looking. Dear audience, we actually don't intentionally fuck up every single introduction we've ever done. That's not fair because you did a you did a checker pattern. It's a chess move, not checkers. <laughs> that was... <laughs> that was a fucking bishop if I've ever seen one. You went over here, and then you're over there, and before I know it, you did a U-turn. You were back at me, and I had my eyes closed. I don't know what I was. I was looking into my beer. I was gazing into the... That's not fair. You do have a nice galaxy. He legitimately was gazing at his beer. I know, am I right? Because you go over here, and you're over there, and I thought I thought we were going to go back to Karina. I thought it was a three... No, we don't, apparently we don't do that. Why, why we don't, did you think they were going to come back to me? Because he, he called you two, three, four. Because right he called there. you Judge Judy, so then he, he said Judge Judy himself and Nate, and then I thought you were actually going to introduce yourself. No, apparently you're no. Judge Judy, and we do a checker pattern. Here comes the bishop. Well, I'm not Antigone. Mike Price, that's me. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself, because they're coming around town real quick. All right, let's move on. Welcome to the Meddling with Nature audio only vlog. Each week, our little crew discusses the how-to and why-to of the naturalist arts, from taxidermy to wood grain, arachnophobia to apiculture. No stone is left unturned. This has some sensitive themes and sensual language. It's not a warning. It's our quality assurance. But so what is intelligence? Being able to get what you need. Being able to hoof it through a maze to that piece of cheese. <clears throat> no, I okay. need a way no. to get there. Like, if, even if you're hoofing <clears throat> it through, like, there's one mouse that's like, I'm going to, like, start at the start line, I'm just going to, like, make it through the maze. And there's another mouse who's like, oh, this maze is made out of cardboard, and I can chew through cardboard, and just, like, chew straight through to the other side. Mm -hmm. Like... That mouse, they might be like, oh, that mouse who, like, chewed through to the other side is smart. But that mouse also might just be a lazy-ass motherfucker. Well, one might actually, okay, so go straight for the cheese because the scent eats through the maze. The other mouse finishes the maze in record time and then whips that cheese right out of the maze because he was in it for the chase. Yeah. So what's more intelligent? One, one needs... The one who got there first. Well, no. Assuming there's only one cheese. But... The other mouse didn't care about the cheese, just cared about the maze. The other well, ca the other mouse well, only cared about the cheese and ate through the maze. I don't know. I'm not but, in the mouse's mind here. But it's, are, it's a human apparently. mind. It's a human mind. It's a, it's, it's a motive. I think that intelligence well, let's means the manifestation no, of motive. And I, think that that's, that. that, I think that that's the point I'm trying to make, though, is that like mm -hmm. one way of thinking is completely different than the other. Like, the mouse who's like, I'm going to go t directly towards the cheese. I'm going to eat through the maze and get into the cheese. And then the other mouse who says, I'm going to do this the logical way and figure it out. And that's, actually, of course, maze. anthropomorphize. But, but it, and, and that, that's like, we're not quite at animal intelligence yet. We're at human intelligence and putting it onto animals. I think if we're going to compare the in intelligence of two mice or two anything, we need to hold, with our current definition, the goal constant. So in this case, the goal is getting to the cheese quickly. So in that instance, the one who gets there first and gets it is the more intelligent. I think a better so, way of doing it is <clears throat> taking this analogy and deconstructing it. What is What is the cheese? What is that's the maze? Useless. What are you talking what, about? No, it's Where not are you useless. Going? Are you nuts? No, that's not Where useless. Where are you going with this? Well, you're saying that the prime motivation in both scenarios is the cheese, where it's We're it's positing a, a very simple goal for the sake of definition. Yeah, because... Yeah, if, but there are if, two goals. What goals? 
One is action. One's a verb. One's a noun. Those Get, are the two getting goals. Getting to cheese. What? What? There are two goals. One goal is to get through the maze. The other goal is to get to the cheese. Yeah, and what I'm saying is that we need to clear one of those off the table if we're going to define intelligence by a goal. We need to talk about... But this is the thing, though, is that I don't agree. I think that there are two different kinds of intelligence. Yes, but if we're going to compare, we need to narrow. And here's here's where you're, you're disagreeing, because you're right, but you're sort of taking it wrong. What I'm saying then is if we can't hold the goal constant, we can't compare intelligence. But, okay, then we get into the animal aspect of it and our need to compare cows and octopi. Uh, so, okay, can a cow get to a bale of hay faster than an octopus in a maze, in, in a corn maze in a field? And the answer is that the octopus doesn't want to. I'm not sure the cow wants to. My thing with the cow and the octopus is that if the octopus had octopus food at the end of this maze, the cow would still beat it because the octopus does not move that fast. Or let's say a falcon. They're adapted to particular survival instincts that get them what they want in different ways. We cannot expect or gauge any other animal by their inability to do the same thing. So we need to look at something that is a little bit more focused not in a scenario, but more as a, a, a direction of A to B. So, with animal intelligence, one thing that we can think about is um, how far in the future you can think. If it's useful to so think. My. So, here's my thing. The fact that so you are a meat eater, right? You're eating um, beef on a regular basis, chicken, well, pork. Well, because... Jeremy gave me a huge pile He's of it. It's kind of like being I, a freegan. But you yes. still are... I'm, I'm more of a freegan. Okay, so I, if I, I gave you octopus for free, would you eat it? Because here's my thing. I'd be reluctant. When I brought up the, fe- when I brought up the sushi thing, I didn't say, we're gonna have sushi octopus. You put the stipulation in there. Okay, but no octopus. And I said, why? And you said, because they're smart. Mm-hmm. That in and of itself is saying that you have some kind of constant that makes an octopus smarter on some level mm-hmm. than the other meat that you're eating, ergo beef, which is why I compared the two. So what mm-hmm. is it to you that makes that... What is that constant for you? Why would you say that an octopus is smart and you're not willing to eat that, but you're willing to eat beef? I, I admire... I mean, there's a few animals that are clever enough that, that I admire them. I, Jeremy, I know you admire them. Mm-hmm. Um, crows... Uh, octopi, um, raccoons, possums, humans, pigs, children. No. You know, like, we could, if, if we, if we split them out of the species, even like the, the urban poor are incredibly intelligent and interesting and they'd be fun to study, except they're humans, so we judge them as being an inferior. Because race. They're, yeah, because we're, we're working within our own things, and that's the thing. Shh. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, there, there are these species that I just admire because they're clever and they're using tools and they're they're so human. I mean, they're like children. They're like like those those kids we were talking about earlier. Like when they get an idea for the first time, and you're like, oh, you're on the right track. You're you're getting there. That's so exciting. There's it's exciting to see what they're doing. So it's it's always in compared to humans. They're so human is saying that it's like intelligence. The baseline is humans. Yep. And I think you had brought up, Jeremy, talking about chimps and apes, and, <clears throat> and, and I'd be interested in... Everything you. bred towards its purpose. I, I think that when we're looking at, um, some, well, some of the animals that, 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 that have the long game in mind, you know, tortoises that are found with Civil War bullets in their shells and things like that, that, that everything has a particular motivation in its own species that is unknowable to the species itself. It is not God. It is certainly not the, uh, um, I want to say Algamas, but that's certainly not it. That's a book about the stars. Um, planets, actually, sorry. Um, but it, it, we cannot use our own definition of intelligence as a standard towards anything else other than accepting that it is an average of ourselves. We can't attribute that to what New Caledonian crows are thinking when they're making tools, or what uh, we can, 
a little bit better with chimpanzees, gorilla, because the primate thing is so well, close. But, it, but, uh, but elephants, whales, dolphins, once you get into the ocean, you are screwed. And I think that the same thing goes with, with, uh, with something like an octopus, because it shares so little with our anatomy and physiology that the choices it makes don't even make any sense to, to our comprehension. But, I mean, there, there was that example given earlier where, where a captive octopus sneaks out of its tank and kills the, the fish in the other tanks and goes back to its own tank. Is that, yes, Jordan. Um, is that intelligence or Tracy is Morgan? that, See Jordan is, is that AI? Yeah, it's his character. AI? Yeah. How could it be AI? It's, it's, it's obviously a leading question. Um, How do you tell the choice or is it that it just does it? How do I tell that you have choice? Exactly. I mean, this goes into yeah. we can only define the intelligence of ourselves. Literally, our one self. Yes. yes. Exactly. Okay. That's what I. So mean. we're getting to solipsism, which is great. Oh. But let's try to step back from there. I have cream for that. <laughs> okay. So solipsism is the doubt that anything but you and your own experience exists. Right, because I literally have have logically speaking have no way of knowing that Karina is not a robot. I don't experience your thoughts. You know, you could be a hallucination or a dream. I don't know. But I do it's, know that I hope really I'm like, a dream. That you cannot tell. It's not about, like, I, you know, like, that, that, that you can only answer for your own mind as best as you can, and even that's shaky. Yeah. You certainly cannot go outside of your space. It's, it's hard to walk in another man's shoes. It's really hard when you've got uh, eight tentacled limbs. Yes. So, I would say with the octopine, with that example with mm-hmm. the aquariums, it's, I mean, it is, it is projecting in, uh, anthropocentric, um, sort of cast on the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think I can say in a weird way that I, again, admire the octopus and its cleverness and its go-getter Puritan attitude. And- Damn it, and for the same sort of reason, this is why I love the yew tree. I really do, because it does exactly the same thing. It poisons the ground underneath it. It is effectively immortal. If it starts decaying, it starts eating itself and grows a new root system. That is intelligence. And that is fantastic. Yeah. And that's a tree. Um, but that's also what... See, but it doesn't have a brain. Is that intelligence? Well, tell me that... about the brain of an octopus. How about the nervous system of an octopus? Or your own. Or your own. <laughs> but the fact that that plant doesn't have that, is that, does, is that considered intelligence or is that evolution? It's adapted. It's adapted, adaptability. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically what Nietzsche is getting at. I, I've been reading, um, his book, The Gay Science, again, um, and, and one of the, the, the main themes in book three is that, um, intelligence is, sort of is doing what is beneficial to life. Um, so sort of what is adaptive. But it doesn't have a... It doesn't... Okay. Because life it, is its own goal. Well, here's how I... Life I'm, is the ultimate it, goal. Let me it just is put, that cheese at the end of the maze. Just since we're on this top, this subject, or this, this, this particular train of thought, let me just put this out there, and I just want to hear what how, what you have to say about this. So I feel like personally, intelligence relates directly to conscious thought, mm-hmm. and a plant that's doing that has no conscious thought. So how can you say that it is intelligent when it is not consciously aware of the decisions that it's making to be what we consider uh. to be intelligent? We look at it and we're like, oh, that's an intelligent move mm-hmm. on that thing's part to survive that way, but it's not consciously aware of that choice. So this why is, is that intelligent? This is the rational animal. This is... This is a really good point because I mean, now that you bring it to consciousness, shit, we got that, we had that licked uh, centuries ago. Nate? <laughs> the hell of a setup? What? <laughs> why did you, yeah, why'd you throw, why'd you toss that thing? Like, it was like, like as if, I got a very interesting thing about what you're saying. Nate, go on. It's like you guys are <laughs> a debate team, you've been practicing for months, and you just tossed oh, that thing, and he's like, uh, no, I mean, okay. I haven't so, been studying. I don't know. No, a, a huge part of of the way, we, like we like to think about rationality as as like the essence of our consciousness, and it's really not. So much of the way we cogitate is 
pre-rational, pre-conscious um, thinking about vision, because that's the thing I know best, um, you know, all of this, like, edge detection, all of this sort of uh, combining things into objects and shapes and, and three-dimensional shapes happens before you really get into the brain and into consciousness. Um, and, and all of these things are incredibly clever and useful and adaptive, um, but they, they happen outside of consciousness, or they seem to. So is that intelligence? Well, in your, we, I suppose but it's, in with, your... without that sort of thing, we couldn't possibly be intelligent, because we wouldn't have sensible sense perceptions. But I think intelligence is, you have to, it's the step beyond that. So of course it's going to include that, but it's what comes after. Perhaps it's the connection of the skills. I mean, what you're saying, vision, and even our ability to perceive diagonals, uh, because there are certain angles that some people just simply can't see. Um, which is weird, but uh, what does, yeah, what is that? Oh, mean? that's in the, the the seventh cortical layer. We do not need to get into it. Okay. But that doesn't make any sense. But 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 then but then we'll, we'll take that kind of example with other senses that we possess, such as touch, such as uh, hearing, hearing especially. Uh, but then, what about those that we simply do not? That our species does, in some ways, claim that we do echolocation, or other ways in which animals sense things that are in no way related to the way humans sense things. So we gauge intelligence in other species based off of our senses. It's much more difficult when you're looking at something that, I don't know, can detect... Yeah, can detect uh, electrical signals in water. What does that seem like? Is it a smell? Is it a sound? Is it a... It's not comparable. It's, It's not comparable to us, but they act on it as their prime intelligence. It's a skill. Or you now redefine the word in a way that make, makes Mike uncomfortable. I did. I was thinking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, there is. There is. Are we? Are we denying a priori intelligence? Are we? Are... A priori. I know. Just use words. Just right. Let it. Just uh, all right. I don't know what that means. A priori. Please it's, tell it's, the listener what that means. Can you say it also? Can in you? A because I know exactly accent. what that word means. Can you Quid tell the listener pro. what it means? Quid quo pro. Uh, so, Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically, uh, we know something a priori or, or prior to probably is the best language. Yeah, before in English. Um, if if we don't ex- if we don't gather it from the outside world, so you're born into the world with some intelligence. Um, so, like, math... Instinct. Well, well, like, math is probably a good example. Um, yes, actually it is. A lot of you listeners right? won't think it is, but yes, it is. Um, if, if you just... If you're just a mind floating in space, you could come up with something like math. Mm-hmm. And you could go from addition to multiplication to um, squares and square roots and on and on and on. Uh, and you might be said to have that knowledge sort of built into the rational structure of your mind. The argument of that also is is built into the structure of you. Mm-hmm. That, that That's why math even works, because that's also why, why it's also one of the more rigorous of the sciences that requires predictions to be fulfilled before it's acceptable. Uh, go on. Well, that's, that's a priori. And, yeah. and so something that's not a priori would be like, I know that Mike has brown hair. I couldn't have known that without having sensed Mike in the yeah, world. It's very experiential. Hmm. But I could know that 1 plus 1 equals 2 because that's an abstract thing. So long as you have the words for it and the definitions for yeah. it and so on and so forth. Karina, what do you think about animal intelligence and the topic? Should we start teaching our chickens in the farms how to count their eggs no. to increase their nutritional value to us? Oh, I think we're doing enough to the chickens. <laughs> We should, probably, <laughs> we should leave the chickens alone. We ought to teach them to count their calories. Leave right there, the chickens alone. No, no, we don't want to teach the them chickens to count Chickens have calories. had enough problems in relation to American ideas of what chickens should be doing. See, I can go on a stump speech right now, but um, I want to hear a bit more about, like, because this is such a core, fundamental topic to meddling with nature. Um, that we argue about and think about and, uh, uh, 
write about a lot. And so I think I'm at kind of this, this, this weird disadvantage of having too many weird facts in my head as far as what particular animals can do. And then there's a shame that I have oftentimes that, uh, like the bower bird I go to a lot because, uh, you know, there's a very sexy man that presents bower birds. Um, I go to them a lot because they're examples of creativity. There's examples of war. Bower birds are really easy to go to when you're talking about creativity. They are because they're fucking awesome. Like, they're like, like, they are the go-to birds when you're talking about creativity. And so, yeah, it's, it's, you know about bower birds? They're the only birds when you can. No, they are not! No, they are when you're, yes. They're the only one. They're the only one, yes. No. But they are the prime example. Yeah, they're the only one that you're gonna say is number one. There's like nobody that's even close to the bower bird. That's the number one. That's the only one that you're gonna say is. That's the one that is the most human. (laughs) Yeah. The most human. Oh, how so? Because the male, like, Oh, this is a conversation that I had with a five-year-old today. Okay, they're very changing. The five-year-old says to me, how come the males are always the ones that are more showy in the insect world? That's not true. That's not true at That's all. That's not true. And That's I, actually and I almost was like, exactly opposite. I was, is it? Yes. Praying mantis, uh, most spiders, all the insects. Like the, the showy part is the combative nature. Stag beetles got the stags. But it depends on what part of the insect world you're looking at, as far as that goes. Okay, so her mother went, well, in nature, honey, it's really weird. The male of the species is always the more showy of the two, which is really weird because when you're looking at humans, it's usually the woman who's the more showy. I I think the males are most showy. Yeah, it really depends. I mean, the male go has on. to, like, go out Tell and get me. a job in the house, and the Lady, house is I mean, a big showy thing. Is it? Women just have to have a damn dress. But this is, this is why the bowerbird also... And makeup and there hair you go. and there you color go. There you go. and... Yes, it, the, this, this is the bowerbird thing. This is I, why it's such a go-to animal. Go on. Oh, no, I just was... I, I, For what you're saying, I understand. It's the woman is the one that is the more showy with doing your hair and your makeup... And wearing that dress or whatever, men don't, men do do that to an extent, but not in the same way. It is similar to, it's opposite in the animal kingdom, where the male is the one that is more beautiful in the way that we see the word beautiful. We mistake males in the animal kingdom as females because we, 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 we so look at them as being beautiful. Okay, it's just, shh. You're projecting human beauty, and I and I want to say this: if we were looking at it from the outside, we might see this this woman who is, to a human eye, very beautiful and well dressed and 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 perfectly proportionate. But to a, to a somehow objective observer, we might see her as just this isolated body. And here's this male doing these big showy things, these huge actions, leading armies for crying out loud, um, going in, into these battles, building homes and houses and empires. That would that would potentially you know radically stereotype the genders would be potentially much more showy than this sort of subtle fussing over over aspects of the body. It's a way in which we we interpret them because again, like the body thing, you're still putting on makeup and dresses and being showy. It's not about biology. It's not about physiology that that is that is creating this this kind of impression. Because let's say in a in a typical 1940s life. The male is the provider. He's, he's giving some sort of home that has later on in the years a really nice vinyl siding that is, that is water resistant. The lawn is mowed to, to two and a half inches. Everything is wonderful. And the wife, she comes just blazing out of the front door in a red dress and nice, you know, like curled hair and everything else. These are things that, so basically, okay, so the man has created uh, a very showy existence, just like a peacock And has. his wife is this trophy. And or he's provided the, dress the wife this. has, in this case, is not even as pretty, because in the, in these two scenarios, he's these two people, trophy. he's got a shell like a snail, like a hermit mm-hmm. crab. He's grown this thing, he's created this thing, or he's stolen this thing that is really, really pretty. And again, if he's the bread maker, bread maker he bought the dress for the woman. And but but also that they're Jesus two trophy. very separated views of of this kind of beauty of sexual selection. One is something that that is almost snail like. The other it is something that is a, that is no, adorning. 
Um, and, and also, like, when we're looking at something like a peacock, it's, it's incompatible altogether because that is something that is inherent in the genetics. That's something that they cannot change. Uh, it's, it's, it's strictly sexual selection mm-hmm. and natural selection. When uh, we look at something like the power bird, it's so easy for us to see the intelligence of it, though peacocks have them too, have a lot of intelligence too, because it is an intentional cooing. It is an intentional um, dating ritual that, that is done to, to the other birds. What is, what is intentionality? How do we know that they're intentional? How do you know that I'm intentional? That's what I. That's what I would go back to saying. It is a conscious awareness. That's how you. That is intention. But we but can't that is know. The, we can't know that consciousness exists. We, in, in order for this argument to go any for any further, we have to then look at. Uh, this is actually where I was trying to go before. We have to look at instinct. Instinct is different than the sexual selection of a peacock, which is is born of genetics. It is also different than choices. And the warbling and the songs that are made by, let's say, lyre birds or starlings even, or, or different types of grackles, that they learn things that attract mates. So you have one is born this way because it is of a good genetic stock. The other learns these things and is able to replicate them, possibly because of a good genetic stock. But this is an ongoing debate in, in humanity. Nature versus nurture. This is far from settled. It's not clear that we only learn things. So we can't even figure it out for our species, right? Yeah. So, so there's no chance in hell we can go anywhere with animals because we don't even understand the psychology of it, despite what we have created, such as dogs. Well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be firm in saying that we can't understand it, but we should be very con- uh, uh, cautious and coming to conclusions. So, just, just, to, just to give another really nice, easy point that doesn't involve going too ter- terribly deep, when we've got, this is something that we've got a lot of documentaries and stuff like that, dogs versus chimpanzees. Intelligence? Which one's got more of it? How do we test that? Let's... It depends on the dog and the chimpanzee. Well, a little bit more than that. Let's say, let's, let's give it an experiment. We have to have specifics, right? We have to have specifics in order to get the answer. So we have to have a test, something that we agree is intelligent. So we can devise a test in which we're trying to ascertain intelligence of, of, uh, of taking cues, taking social cues, because both of these animals are considered social. So let's say, but we're taking ourselves as the focal point. We, we take two covered bowls in front of us. One has food, the other does not. We're looking at the chimpanzee, and we're pointing desperately at the at the bull with food. They don't give a shit. They pick the wrong one. We do it again, and again, and again, and again. We find out that what we end up with is complete randomness as to when the chimpanzee finds the food and when it doesn't, even though we are screaming, screaming at it with our fingers that it's the opposite bull. Dogs, almost 100%, if you point to a bull, will automatically go to that bull. It's a type of conditioning. Um, socialization. Go on. Yes, Karina. I had a dog once. <laughs> Please, let's <laughs> end it right there. Well, there you have it. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Please just stop. Ironically, it is like 44 minutes, so we <laughs> couldn't do it that way. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Go on, I'm Karina. Not you, but that is... And... She was a very smart dog. I love this dog to death. Mm-hmm. And she had this thing where, like, I had, like, purchased this, like, dog bowl. It was, like, one of those, like, traveling dog bowls. So it was made out of cloth. And I would, like, take her out, and I would, like, fill the dog bowl up with water. She would not drink water out of this dog bowl unless she, like, literally watched me pour the water into it. Like I would be That's like, I have a water bottle. To what I'm saying, and it was weird because like this was like a thing was that like I would have to like maybe like pour the water out. Like she didn't see me do it. I'd have to. I was like, I don't have any more water. Sorry, dog. I'd have to pour the water out to let her know. <laughs> like I'd have to be like, there's water in here. Like you are thirsty, and there is water in this bowl. Like. You need to drink the water out of this bowl. Ooh, okay, so, but basically what I'm saying is exactly what I you're saying. I would have to prove to her that there was water in the bowl. That's what I'm saying. You have to prove, but they take, they're take they taking those cues to go for the food under yeah. that covered dish because, basically, we have created artificial selection 
Which is also kind of like Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, that's kind of how domestication works. I do think we should try to get back to animal intelligence in general and comparing that to how we view human intelligence and what it actually means to view the animal kingdom as being intelligent. Because well, what does that mean? Yes, well, but, we but that, about, that we too. We haven't defined animal the, intelligence. Nor are we human. No, More human. yeah. So we should. We should. I think we should. Our get high to moment it. was was yeah. What, what you were saying with you know the the trees thing because when we're looking at spiders, when we're like yeah. oh, we don't God, look at spiders. right? You're, but they're such a good. Well, the the intelligence of insects. Yeah, well, you can talk about spiders. No, I'm not going to even risk it. <laughs> that is like walking through. That is tiptoeing through the minefield. Um, how do we classify intelligence? Currently, we still really enjoy classifying that by a brain, locating it very much in the central nervous system, to the point even where some athleticism could be considered intelligence based off of muscle memory and things like this. And I mean athleticism as uh, uh, virtuosos of instruments and things like that, things that, that, that are a function of the body that are exquisite in nature. When we look at some of the very interesting behaviors of, uh, and especially when we're looking at predatory behaviors of insects, of arthropods, we look at the central nervous system, that becomes real difficult because it's all a jumbled mess. Because when we're looking at, at, at central brains, they don't really even exist. So um, it's easy to just call them machines. See, that... Okay, I, I'm glad that you said that because that, to me, a machine... Thinking of them as machines, that's mm-hmm. how I'm thinking of those plants that you were talking about. Right, that that's why I bring it up. So. I'm, glad, I'm glad you used the word machine because I wasn't able to kind of connect. Within the DNA, level, but that's, the fungus, that's what I was thinking about. Within DNA, fungus has more in common to us than a fly. That actually is true, not just a meme. We, okay, so we have to, what is intelligence? What does that mean? Fuck the animal kingdom. Let's just, you want to narrow it down to figure out a constant. Okay, here's your constant, human beings. How are you going to define intelligence? We're going to talk about intelligence in the animal kingdom. There is no way that we can't help but compare animals to ourselves. So let's take everything out of the equation except for ourselves. How are you going to define that? What does that mean to be intelligent or smart or clever? I don't care what word you're going to use. What does that mean? Because we all know they're even just as simple as Book smarts and street smarts. That's a very simple thing that all people understand. Those are very different ends of the spectrum of intelligence. Is it also not real close to um, to the idea of, of instincts? And... Again, I think you have to, if you're going to do an intelligence test, you have to hold the goal constant. If you want to say that one thing is smarter than the other. Um, so if you give two people a Rubik's Cube and they understand what the goal is, the one who solves it or solves it faster is the more intelligent in that dimension um, or in that situation. Now, if you want to get to a broader understanding of intelligence, you do enough of, uh, you propose tests with a wide range of goals, to similar goals, um, and take some sort of average over that. I think a Rubik's Cube is not in itself a, a test of anything, except for one tiny fraction of yes. something. Yes, so you take very, very many tests that are very dissimilar, mm-hmm. but specific, like that. One yeah. of which being the Rubik's Cube, and another one being yeah. something entirely different. And then you take an average. I would say that, that, that there is an element of to normal get a functioning, measure. an element of normal functioning, that it could be diagnostic when there is abnormality, but that it itself is not a diagnostic of intelligence quotients. You saw what I was getting at. Well, let's let's talk to the inventor of the IQ test and see why he invented it and what he warned us not to do. Which was it doesn't exactly what matter. Do. Not everyone understands everything they invent. We need to talk about the test itself and how we want to interpret it. And he doesn't have, have privilege over it now that he's invented it. And what have we done with it? Well, I think that's irrelevant. What studies have shown that this is accurate in any way? I'm not defending it. But I, I will, okay, I will defend it against your attack. I think you're unreasonable. But I, I won't defend it in and of itself. I will defend it against attacks. Mm-hmm. 
But if it's just chilling there... It is insanity. The entire thing is utter insanity that we would ever pretend that this is even a good way to judge ourselves. But the fact that we would try to judge other species in a similar way is insanity. Here's the problem. The problem is that we're we're using it in contexts where it's inappropriate. Um, You know, job interviews probably are a lot more responsible for judging people in intelligence. Push the reason that personality and those are tests, probably even worse. The reason that personality tests exist is because of an obsession with the IQ tests, which are also given in job interviews. And a lot of the personality tests are dressed up IQ tests. It, we're no longer talking about animal intelligence. No, I think it was we're kind not. of nice. We were talking, we we're arguing about about assessing two particular species, and then getting to the point where. The argument of can you even assess your own? So it kind of boils down to you can't. No, you can't assess. There is no that, such thing as when declaring. No, is, an, can you yeah. declare but animal intelligence? It's relative. Can you? It, and you can. You, you can. No, I don't think you can. Not no, universally, no, no. But subjectively, yes. Uh, if we develop our ending as we go, then yes. As we shine the lights from our eyes onto something, yes, we can. Um, but, but you cannot, it's a Schrodinger's cat world out there. You can't do it. So how would you, let me just ask, I just am curious to see what you would say. Because we've been talking about the IQ test. How would you declare human intelligence? How would you decide that? How would you decide on just human intelligence? An IQ test? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying it's just this kind of, it's a subjective kind of you look at two humans only at a time. What is it? We're not talking about other animals. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't pretend to understand what the IQ test is. Because, it, because I don't it, know what it is. But it, I, I do know that I know usually a more intelligent person from a less intelligent person. Well, because in, in a sense, I'm asking you to define the word intelligence using humans as an example. And how do you do that? I'm I'm certain that would be more than a PhD dissertation. So then, how can we even get into? It's not to say no, no. That's not to say that there is no such thing. Just that it's a very large question. There absolutely is. Jeremy, no, no. no I'm no, asking no. both of you. We they know what first. Here. What is pornography? It's I'll know it when I see it. Will you say there's no such thing? <laughs> that's absurd. <laughs> But that's that's why I'm saying that the entire question is absurd. It's not absurd. But that's there the answer. The answer, the answer, I'll know it when I see it. There is pornography, that's funny. though. There is such a thing. Depends on where you're at. Well, then I'm asking, so you're saying, uh, I'm, okay, so Nate answered, and I'm, I want you to answer. Ask now. me the question. I want to hear it from your mouth. <laughs> the question is, how do we determine intelligence... Period. So we're going to talk about only in human beings. How are you going to determine intelligence in human beings alone? You so I want you to de- not. I want you to define the word intelligence in terms of humans, using humans as an example. Some sculptors are subtractive. Some sculptors are additive. I believe that this question is subtractive. We know intelligence when something's wrong with it. Kind of going on the pornography thing. But that's that's really actually what I, I think. We see deficits in comparison to ourselves. We can we see also see surfaces. Well, sure, we do. But in assessments, in diagnostics, no, we don't. You don't I mean, achieve. That's the you don't of achieve. Though. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I, I, I guess like, but we're not a, we're not finding the pin. We're not finding the pinnacles of anything. We're finding things that are wrong, the thing that, the things that are abnormal. Because that's what we're looking for. Because we're looking for things that are not right. And if we change, if we shifted our gaze... So it's only in... Fi- that shifts the diagnostic completely. So you're saying it's only in finding things and determining what is wrong that we can decide what is right. How many intelligent people were able to tell the color of that motherfucking dress? Uh, versus how many pop-up things happened about... Well, it depends on how many colons you have in your eye. That was all bullshit. All of that was bullshit. But what it focused on was trying to find deficits of people. Not 
Einstein would have seen this dress this color. It's, it's matters of perception. It really is, is shades of gray. There, there is no assessment. There is only diagnostic of something wrong. Of something. I disagree. I, I don't, when we're talking about, about marking people that we don't know personally. I can understand your intelligence. I know you. I can understand your intelligence. I know you. I cannot do the same you know thing. You when you see it. Yes. So do you think you can answer in a yes or no? You get a yes or a no. That is it. Can you determine whether or not a human being is intelligent? Yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. Nate? 100%. Is intelligence? I, I would say it's not a binary. Yes or no? So, no. This was totally a trap that was intended, by the way. <laughs> so if one of you, and I would consider two of you, both of you, Jeremy and Nate, to be two of the smartest motherfuckers I've ever met in my life, mm -hmm. and it's funny that I'm even saying that because that's me deciding that you are intelligent, right? Yes. And, and again, both positive, in, not negative, not both, diagnostic. Both positive. in reference to the podcast and outside different, of the different. podcast, I am saying that you're two of the smartest motherfuckers I've ever met. Different. And here, and here, the two of you are disagreeing on this subject. So, why do you area. think that is? Why do you think that is? Because I've already said, I have already said, goddamn 45 minutes ago, I said, that there is no way to do any kind of standard because... Out, we are absolutely. All there is are, no fucking way to are, do any type of standard. We are individual human beings, and the way that you're gonna perceive things, and the way you're gonna in, perceive intelligence, you cannot look at seven billion fucking people and make any kind of standard that from that you can determine whether or not an individual is intelligent or not. Oh, your, well, your, your, your question was weird. Your assumption is incorrect. Yeah. That we must apply a standard. That's that's the thing. You asked about intelligence. Yes, and and Isaac how Asimov made this easy for us all. How else are you going to in, how else are you going to determine whether or not an individual is intelligent if you don't have a standard? Choice. Okay, again, there I can make a standard, you can make a standard, Jeremy can make a standard. I can make a very probably, broad scientific standard. They'll probably all be different and they will all be meaningful, but there is not a what, universal standard. And that we all agree it comes on. to you don't know what Nate's definition of intelligence is. You don't know what my definition of I'm intelligence is. I'm not saying is. can you can you can you determine whether or not a human is intelligent compared to me? I'm saying no, you. So no. you're building a standard I'm, in order to do that. So is he. But yeah, but the but the, the but standard standards is are relative. They're standard. Yes, they are re that's that's exactly that our point. Them useless or meaningless. Because it makes that's the point. Generalizable. Because we both have different definitions of what your term was. Exactly. You've got to ask what nope. the term is. No, nope, that's exactly my no. point. Because that but that's goes, our point too. Then I think. Then I think we should figure out what why you're saying that all three of us have agreed on the same point. Because that's what I had said 45 minutes ago. Is that? And I agreed with that too. Yeah. Then some fucking IQ test. There's no. There is no fucking way. That we can, everybody can agree on one way to determine but, whether or not people are intelligent or not. Because again, it's, it is it's individual, false, subjective, and you no, said that. Intelligent, yeah, no, it's, you're it's a seeing, false goal to assume that the good, the best thing is, that the only good thing is, that everybody must agree. We can do useful and good things without having everybody agree. So, why? I, let me ask you this, then, follow up to Karina's the previous question. She's done with dialogue. Why did you answer... Yes, that you can determine whether or not a human being is intelligent. Because my definition of intelligence is being able to make decisions um, externally. It's basically almost the same definition of, of what life is. It's independence of its surroundings. It is able to consciously make decisions towards its own future. Um, it will never hurt another human. <laughs> Sorry, Isaac Asimov. Um, that's, that's all intelligence is. It is self-awareness. So why did do you I think yes? all humans are self-aware, with the exception of 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 alleles such as uh, uh, comatose patients, um, brain dead patients? Everything, every human is intelligent. Every human 
in their own right is capable of determining whether or not somebody else is intelligent. It Everybody may be very maladaptive. Is that what you're? Is that why you say it yes? may be? Ex it may be be fostering a very negative worldview. It may be completely skewed. But intelligence is nothing more. You didn't ask. I'm just. I'm I curious. Agree to, of it. But you did say yes. I'm just curious of why did you say yes? Because my definition of intelligence is self consciousness and uh, agency. And why did you say no, Nate? Um, because I believe there are degrees of intelligence, and there's no point at which I could say something is or is not intelligent, because intelligence spans the spectrum. So, as you're saying, mine is a very low limit of it must meet these requirements. In order to have life on another planet, you must have these requirements. What Nate is saying is that it is, it is a, a type of spectrum that must be... And again, okay, and again, I, I'm just going to stop right there. I think I'm just going to put it out there one more time, and anybody who's listened to the podcast knows you two motherfuckers are real smart. They know it. I know it. Karina knows it. That's why she left because she was like, "I can't." She's handle tired. It. And yeah, she was. Cause she can't handle the brain power. If I oh, had, no, she's a if drunk. I, I know. If I, if I had to deal with as many kids as she had to deal with today, you better believe I'd be she out there. She is a drunk little kid. Regardless, right my point is, it's very interesting to me the two points that you've just made, and I think that's a great way to end it. And I'm glad that I recorded yes, this whole awesome. last part on my phone. You're welcome. So let's go ahead and just end right there. I'm not going to let either of you go any further because you both made great points and they were on each end of the spectrum. And you're wait, 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 no, 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 no. What is their, their favorite cookie? We have it. No. Bing bong. <laughs>